Surface Properties Once a surface is created, its properties can be viewed or edited. To access the properties of the surface, select it in the drawing or from the prospector. Right-click in an empty area and select Surface Properties. The Surface Properties window opens and displays four tabs. The Information tab is where we set the name, description, and default styles, meaning surface style and the render material. On this tab, we can also lock the surface to prevent any further editing and show or hide the display of tooltips. The second tab is Definition. It allows you to specify definition parameters of the surface. For instance, it is possible to determine a minimum or maximum allowed altitude for the construction of the surface. For example, you can predefine a maximum allowed elevation of 400 meters or 1300 feet and a minimum elevation of 300 meters or 1000 feet. We know that the elevations for the current site are around 350 meters or 1200 feet. Thus, we immediately eliminate certain types of errors in the survey data. With a minimum and maximum elevation set, we don't have to worry when the surveyor makes a typo and enters 3,500 meters or 11,500 feet instead of 350 meters or 1,150 feet. We can also set more definition options, such as the maximum triangle lengths, crossing break lines, and much more. The Operation Type section of this window gives you a complete list of actions performed to define the surface. You can change their order by selecting an operation. For example, adding a point group and clicking the ascending and descending arrows on the left. The chronological order is from top to bottom. It is also important to note that in Civil 3D surface definition, the most recent operation, raise slash lower in this case, takes precedence. Let's see what that means. Click on the Statistics tab, last to the right, and take note of the current surface information. Let's write down the value of the mean elevation. Now go back to the definition tab, second from the left. Select the last operation, raise slash lower, and move it up using any of the up arrows to the left. The raise slash lower operation is now at the top. You get a notification, the two yellow exclamation marks, warning you of changes to the surface. That's exactly what we are trying to do, change the surface. By changing the order of the operations, in practical terms, we have first lowered the existing ground by the depth of the topsoil, 15 centimeters or 6 inches. This is because the raise slash lower operation is now at the top, with less priority. We then pasted the existing ground on top of it, which brings us to square one, the existing ground. Since Civil 3D is warning us that a surface definition has changed, we need to acknowledge that. Click on OK to close the Surface Properties window. We will be back right here once we let Civil 3D know what to do with the changes. Now let's go and check the Statistics tab and verify that's indeed what happened. In the Prospector, right-click on the surface with the yellow warning sign. We have two options. The first one is to rebuild. With this option, we will rebuild the surface and continue to get warnings every time we make changes to the surface definition. This is good, as it helps us get aware of potential accidental changes in the surface. The drawback is that intentional changes will not automatically propagate through the design. Thus, other entities, such as profiles, manhole elevations, pipe rules, and earthworks volumes, are not updated. Despite that, these entities depend on the surface. We would need to manually rebuild the surface to make them aware of the new changes. Our second choice is to rebuild dash automatic. This simply tells Civil 3D to go ahead and automatically update the surface and not bother us with warnings while we are busy doing other things. We may save time with this option. However, there is a potential for unintentional changes to the surface to slip through the cracks. They will not be detected because we have decided not to be warned with changes. Our recommendation is always to update manually. The benefit of avoiding costly mistakes could justify the lost time caused by manual updates. So, select the Manual Rebuild mode, and let's go back to the Surface Properties window and check if, indeed, the new value for the mean elevation is changed. We have predicted that the mean value would be changed to that of the original surface. 
Open the Properties window with a right-click on the surface, then go to the Statistics tab. As it turns out, the new value from the mean elevation is now 15 centimeters or 6 inches higher than the stripped surface. That tells us that we are, in fact, back to square one, the existing ground elevations. In summary, it's important to understand that as far as creating surface is concerned, the last operation always wins. As shown by the stripped surface example, we must first copy the existing ground surface, then lower it, not the other way around. Now let's keep exploring the Surface Properties window. If you have already closed it, reopen it and activate the Analysis tab, the third tab from left to right. This tab allows you to perform a visual analysis on the surface. For example, you can carry out an analysis for contours, directions, slopes, elevations, and watershed. We will see how to do these analyses in a minute. Finally, as we have seen before, the Statistics tab allows us to have basic statistics on the surface. We can determine things such as the number of points, maximum, mean, and minimum elevations, the number of triangles and areas. It's easy to check this window for a quick reference and detect possible errors in the creation of a surface, especially regarding minimum and maximum elevations. To expand each section, click on the plus sign to the left of the section's title. 